Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Can you lift your hands to heaven and just glorify the name of the Lord? Exalt Him. Appreciate His faithfulness. Go ahead. Tell Him how beautiful He is. Lift the banner of our God. Exalt His infallible name. after tonight when the sons of men laid hands on him can you listen can you listen when they laid hands on him and hung him on the cross they thought he was finished they didn't know that it is not where you are that matters not where you are that matters. It is not the family you came from that matters. The Bible said that Jesus was born in a manger. You know, the foundation was so dilapidated to the point that questions began coming. He said, with the rumors I'm hearing, I, I don't know, but I feel like asking, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Sight and with insight, who had already beheld the, the glory of the coming king, replied him and said, Come and see. It is better to see. It's not where you are that matters. This night I see the Lord erupting men and women with his massive glory. <laughs> Voices are about to be heard after tonight. Applications are about to be do after tonight. Destinies are about to be remounted after tonight. Glory is about to descend after tonight. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, can you amen a call like a thunder? They had finished him. They afflicted him. They wounded him. They pierced his body. Affliction interprets pain. Isaiah, with the prophetic eye, saw it before the time. Declared it in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 4, chapter 3. He said, For he was wounded for transgression. He was bruised for iniquity. He said, For the chastisement of our peace was upon him, that by stripes. Your affliction shall bring a massive glory to the family where you came from. Your pain shall introduce a new personality in that family. 
your entire household shall witness the turnaround and the supernatural power of God. Somebody shout, I am the man sent by God. Take your seat. You don't search for affliction. Affliction is visible in every locality. 90% of human beings seated here tonight have one or two unpleasant situations. It's an affliction. I love David when he declared in the book of Psalms chapter, 40, chapter 34. He said, for many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, because the righteous doesn't look for affliction. The entire family cannot be afflicted at the same time. A savior must come out of your roots tonight. I read Isaiah chapter 9 and I saw a dark foundation. I saw a dark foundation producing a king. I saw a foundation. The family of Zebulon and Naphtali, the Bible said they were so dark. They were dark and full of gross darkness. Yet Jesus, Jesus came from that same lineage. A lineage that was full of gross darkness. No matter how dark your family is. Tonight in the name that is above every other name. You will bring something new to that family. You will erupt a change in that household. You will bring an everlasting turn around in that family. Can your amen echo like a thunder? You, you turn with me to the book of James chapter 5 verse 13 very fast. Is any among you afflicted? Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Let him pray because the only remedy for affliction is prayers. The only one and only remedy for affliction is what? Is prayers. Is among you afflicted let him pray let him pray let him call on the elders of the church and let them pray for him let him pray let men and women come together and gather together and pray let intercessors come together and stop the interceptor let them pray never be be too much you don't have too much of prayers just the way you don't you don't have too much of praise so the bible said is there any among you afflicted let him pray so he presented the problem and also gave the remedy A prayerless man is a powerless man. A man who fails to pray will become a prey. God only unites himself with men of prayers. Covenants are ignited in the place of prayers. Destinies are abetted in the place of intercessions. Glory is released in the place of prayers. Men build audacity, boldness, and confidence in the place of prayers. There are dimensions of spiritual warfare. You engage and you are no more being threatened by the idols of your father's house. That you can enter anywhere without any fear within you. When Jesus said that prayer is the key, he wasn't, he wasn't overemphasizing. He wasn't joking. He wasn't playing. 
He was actually serious. He meant every word he actually said about prayers. There is never, never a time, never a time things will go wrong in the scriptures when people will come together and not pray about it. Because prayer is a gateway to eternal freedom and liberty. Men of prayers are not far from freedom. Men of prayers are not far from emancipation. Men who understand how to navigate through prayers can't stay in bondage. Is there any among you that is afflicted? Let him pray. Prayer brings about resuscitation. Prayer brings revival. Prayer can raise anything. Anything, I mean anything. Before the time of Lazarus, the Bible says Jesus stood and lifted up his hands in prayers and gave thanks. And then made a demand for the soul of Lazarus. Declared, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the guy couldn't resist the voice of a man who had just finished 24 hours sweating on the mountain. Nothing defies the audacity of a prayerful man. Nothing. Why there are so many prophets with very few solutions in the land is because we have very few prophets who understand the power of prayers. After doing whatever spiritual work you call it, you still need prayers. Spiritual work cannot replace prayers. You don't look for God in an atmosphere. In an atmosphere where there is a man who has downloaded, downloaded God's presence in the place of prayers. As I'm speaking right now, there are people here that by the time they will get up from wherever they are seated, they will discover that that sickness in their body has just disappeared. That the yoke they came here with is just been lifted. The bondage in their lives is just been broken. Somebody can your amen echo like a thunder. There are seven of you under the sound of my voice that before the end of these three days, a miracle in your hands will add to the kingdom of God. I, I just wish that amen can echo like a thunder. I, I wish you can shout that amen like a believer. I wish you can give me a Jericho pulling down. Amen. Prayers. Let him pray. Let him pray. I came with a message on end of affliction. And I will be speaking on end of affliction from the day one to the last day. Why you are looking at me and your face cannot be bright is that there is a situation in your life that even in this atmosphere of worship and praise you cannot just you can't just comprehend what is happening within and around your life and you cannot get you can't get out of that that, that you know that thoughts that imagination that 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 just knowing that you are still in debt Knowing that the sickness is still inside your body. Knowing that your family have rejected you. Castigated you. Silented you. You can't get. You can't, you can't do away with it. Affliction is any situation that raises a dose of mockery. A situation that raises a dose of what? Mockery is affliction. Do me a favor, put your hands on your head. Tas a vina hasaya. La rome ne metu se. Dinama ha capalone pianta. Let you repine ke tu lehe capelu anataya. 
Tanto pire parona pola prana kato levele kuta zima pahala kati yetu. Thus say the Lord God of Israel, every mark on your forehead that is made that that is made every child born into that family to be going through struggle. Even those who have met opportunities, who have encountered situations that should have changed their lives and they redeemed their souls from struggle. Yet they are still struggling. Tonight in the name that is above every other name. Kadele bina adorobe ketu lahasa. I command that the affliction shall come to an end now. The affliction shall come to an end now. The affliction shall come to an end now. Somebody echo the remeleke tonda. If you were five, you are four, you are three or seven in your family, and it looks like everyone is taking the same shape and going through the same pattern. It looks like everyone is suffering the same thing. It looks like everyone is suffering the same setback, the same rising and falling, the same. Never a time anyone stays at the top for a decade. I told them in church on Sunday yesterday that the difference between a wealthy man and a rich man is that a wealthy man had controlled wealth for more than two decades and is still wealthy. He had made situations, unpleasant circumstances that hit him, storms that came on him, yet he's still wealthy. But for a rich man, one sickness will clear your entire account. Why? Because you're rich, you're not wealthy. Five million in your account is not wealth. Luck is not the same thing as relevance. You can be lucky yet you're not relevant. Many got one time platform and ended their lives. Just one time. So first before pulpit. High stool of manifestation. John chapter 5 that's my last scripture for tonight I appeared here late by the grace of God tomorrow the service will begin exactly by 5 and by 6 30 by 6 o'clock I should be on the pulpit because God gave me a message for the land of Eket I'm going to be speaking publicly concerning what God showed me concerning this land I saw horns I didn't come with the mindset to fight. I came to create awareness. I came to sensitize the environment. To let them know. Because there are tendencies of falling a victim of what you don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. For the Lord God, omnipotent, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord John chapter 5 from verse number 1 down to, to 10 we after shall... this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem yes. now there is at Jerusalem by the ship market a pool there which is at Jerusalem by the ship market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue which is interpreted which is called which is profess, confess, pronounce in the Hebrew tongue. What? Bethesda. Bethesda. Having oh. five porches. This particular swimming pool has five porches. Anyway, I've traveled a little. 
and I've not seen a swimming pool with five porches. Many a times you get to see two or three, max four. But the Bible said this one has five, which means it has created enough, you know, avenue for men and women to go into the pool. Enough channel, enough route. Go on. In this lay a great multitude of In important this pool. particular pool. That is a catch. In this pool. That is where. That, that, that's where we are. In this pool lay a congregation of impotent folks. The word impotent means men who are incapacitated. Men without ability, agility, and self strength will. Lay a what? A multitude a of multitude, a congregation, an assembly of impotent folks. There were so many, yet they were afflicted. You can have people all around you, yet with the same problem with you. And a man with the same problem with you cannot help you. The Bible says, For if the blind leads the blind, it says, For the boat shall fall into the dish. Am I right? A false prophet cannot lead you right in Christianity. A false prophet cannot pass into you a genuine battle of revival. A false prophet cannot ordain the season and the time that can bet messiahs like Jesus. A time is coming. The earth is about to be really good. Strange voices will rise. Unknown faces will come up. But then, the old men and the old women will be visiting eternity. Young men will emerge. Young people will emerge. The earth is making a demand for a new face. Great men of God. High profile men of God. Men who, are, or, or, who have already made great names. They will soon visit eternity. Great. Guys who are not known. People like you who is sitting in the congregation. God is about to raise you. You see, sat in the congregation. What happens if in the next seven months, you see him standing before a congregation of over 10,000 people? God is looking for people like this. Looking for men like this. Carriers of revival, end time revivalists, end time evangelists, time instructors, time regulators, time advancers, men who give destinies, who give time destinies. on seasons said this season cannot end without 1,000 revivalists rising affliction is not only when you are sick when you are spiritually dry you are afflicted when you can no longer wake up to pray at night you want to pray something is suppressing your prayer life each time you want to fast, it's as if it's as if they have they have they brought the entire hunger of the land on you. Whenever you take a decision to live a life above 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 intimidation, the intimidation of darkness, 
to live a life of holiness you see that they come in diverse manners because holiness does not just please God it threatens Satan holy living is part of the criteria to be free from affliction you may not like it ache it ache it you may not like it but I came to raise an altar and in the next one month in this land some who swallowed frogs will vomit the frogs any spirit of serpents that is ruling as pastors and prophets making merchandise of the gospel in the name that is above every other name in the name of he who died and arose again I decree now that the end and the judgment of God shall be found the camp of iniquity and that's a man they call like a thunder. I celebrated 20 years on the pulpit, February 19th this year. 20 years of discomfort living. I don't pray for comfort. I'm not even desiring it. Because this thing you call comfort is an enemy to whatever must rule for a long time. Whatever must rule for a long time must not prematurely partner with comfort. You want everything to be jacuzzi, sweet, flexible, no fights, no battles, no struggle, no stress. You don't want stress. Do you know the stress that came on me to put up this meeting? Eh? Or, or you didn't see the posters everywhere in New York, in Naked? you saw interpret the body in my heart only children do program to get money only children do program to raise money mature believers will, will do program to raise men raise men the greatest value on earth is the gift of men the gift of men the gift of men when God surrounds you with capable men, structured men, men with the understanding of the time and the season, put your right hand on your forehead. In the name that is above every other name, any power that wants to cut short the presence of God in your life during these three days, I speak over your life. Tonight with the loudest amen you can echo. The Lord will put the power to shame. The Lord will put the power to shame. The Lord will put the power to shame.